Welcome back to the Pillars of the Earth. We're now starting the second book. My name is Aliena of Shiring. I'm the daughter of the Earl Bartholomew of Shiring. At least, I used to be before my father was arrested for conspiring against the king. And a man I had once refused to marry took control of everything my family had ever owned, including ourselves. Where's the girl? She is where you put her, you fiend. <laughs> Once the king finds out... Here's the key. Now go get her, I'm starving. Why am I fooling myself? There is nothing left. My lady, are you awake? You may come in, Matthew. Dear God, did he hit you? Well, I suppose he's getting more daring now that his father is about to see the king. This is taking too long. Go get them! Right. Milady, I must ask you, do not provoke him. Not yet. Not until you're properly armed. Did you get the weapons? Yes. I hid them up on the wall. Near the gate. Look for a red piece of cloth. Get down here, and no talking. And don't cause any trouble. I just clean my sword. Well, that was quick. You certainly do know your place, don't you? Ugh, what's with your face? Your arrogance makes you ugly. Did you know that? I didn't sleep well. Were you lonely? We've all been sleeping poorly the last few weeks. Your father will be the new Earl soon. This castle will be yours. There's no need to keep the lady and Matthew. her brother hostage. Save your words. You won't listen. <laughs> Oi, Walter. Looks like the princess needs a servant to do her talking. Can't imagine why I ever wanted to marry that ugly boar. A real lady. That's what I deserve. Maybe even Empress Maud. Yes, I'll marry the Empress. But I will keep on fucking her. As if Maud would ever marry you. Shut up! I won't. You have no say around here anymore. I am still the daughter of your Earl. You're a common whore, that's what you are. Oh, how you must enjoy your revenge. You're just getting what you deserve. <laughs> All this just because I wouldn't marry you? Shut up. Shut up! You are a sad man who knows nothing but cruelty. God shall punish you for this. <laughs> I am the cruel one. You renounced our wedding and made me the laughing stock of the entire Shire. Stop, both of you. Go outside, girl. Walk it off.
All right. I shall do so gladly. Anything you need, William? Tell the bitch to get me something to eat. I'm starving. You heard him. Go. Now. I always told you your stubbornness would be your end. Richard, did they let you go? Have you sided with them? Don't be ridiculous. I will never succumb to these beasts. Beasts? That's a bit rude. How are you managing? I'd be managing a lot better if you gave me a sword. <laughs> did he say something funny? That boy with a sword. Look at his back. He can barely lift his own head. Teach a chicken to fight. Might as well just step on it. Have you seen my red scarf? Is that all you worry about? I think Matthew had it last. He said he lost it somewhere. Then ask him. I'm busy trying to come up with a plan. I'll be back soon. Don't lose hope. Yeah. You stay down here with me, do you hear? in here. Let's see. A loaf of bread. And it doesn't look as bad as everything else in here. Chicken. What a horrible smell. Someone must have trapped it in here for fun. What a waste. Flemish, here, girl. Don't you recognize me? Ah, oh, good girl. It must be hard to catch my scent in this rain. One more step and I'll assume you've got a death wish. Nothing in there but filthy water. Nothing. Maybe Matthew meant the other gate. do a lot for him. Tending to his horse, watching his prisoners. What do they pay you? Why do you keep asking me that? I might be able to pay you more. Right. Tell us. How much do you want? Maybe I don't do this just for the money. <laughs> I don't believe you. What else should you gain from... from being cruel? 
An apprentice. Unlike you, Percy Hamley likes the way I've been raising his son. You will go to hell for this. I've been hearing that a lot lately. It's true. People like you are bound to suffer eternal pain. It's what makes this world just. Oh, I didn't know. Guess I'm just not one for deep thoughts like that. Did you get what he asked for? Yes. Good. Don't waste his time, then. Your food. Is that all? After your knights raided the castle, this is all they left. There must be more. There isn't. If you don't believe me, then go and look for yourself. You really think you can play your silly games with me? I am still the daughter of the Earl, and by the law of the King, you are my subject. Oh, my. Forget what I said about your arrogance. It actually makes you quite pretty. Huh? In the name of my father, you will die for this! Master Richard, don't! <laughs> stupid boy. Almost as stupid as his sister. I'd rape you if I could. <laughs> but you're not my kind of lass. What's with her? She dead? Leave her. The king has not yet spoken. Wait till your father is an earl proper. Then you can do with her whatever you want. Damn! To hell with it. She's so ugly, no one would ever want to take her anyway. Put them with the animals until the king has decided. Richard, Richard, wake up. It's just out of reach. It's too high. I'm chained to a post. I can't reach it. If only it was closer. I need you to wake up. No, there are no weapons here, and no sign of my red scarf.
Ali? Ali, my ear. How do you feel? Hot. The wound is boiling your blood. We need to get you someplace dry and cool so you can heal. Ali, they shackled us. I will die here. Calm down. You'll only make things worse. How did you free yourself before? I don't know. When they put me here, they had the shackles fitted to my ankles. But today, I somehow managed to slip through. These three weeks must have made me very determined. Yes, and very thin. Don't give up. We will get out of here. And what then? We'll find Father. He'll know what to do. I heard them say that he's with the King in Winchester. Then that's where we'll go. You'll see. He'll make things right again. Don't give up. We will get out of here. I don't know. It's just out of reach. Richard. It's too high. I'm chained to a post. I can't reach it. If only it was closer. Richard. Hmm, Matthew must have hidden them somewhere else. Richard, throw me that horseshoe. It's not hard enough to break the chain. I already tried. I'll think of something. Just give it to me. next. Can you stand? I'll try. Good. Then wait here. I'll find us a way to get out of here. Let's take his horse. Yes. Good idea. But first we need the weapons Matthew hid for us. Sure, for my taste. William's henchman 
Being from a politically ambitious noble family, William Hamley commands a small army of his own. He likes to keep his three most trusted men by his side, Walder, Hugh Axe, and Ugly Jervis. The latter two are knights known for their violence and loyalty. Their names also strike fear in hearts of their enemies. Walter was once William's instructor and taught him to fight and ride since William was a boy. Now Walter is his bodyguard and right-hand man. The knights weren't prepared and the peasants scattered like chicken. What I wouldn't do for a good kill. I found it. Matthew's piece of cloth. Try to stay sharp. If he wakes up, shout and run as fast as you can. Do you hear? I will. Careful! He doesn't seem to like that. that they could catch up with us urged me to ride onward. It rained relentlessly. After a while, Richard's moaning got weaker, but I did not dare look back, for I feared to see William Hamley right at our heels. I forced the horse to go faster, hoping that my brother would not succumb to his wounds. We headed toward Winchester. The king would make things right if we explained them to him. He had to. It wasn't long until Richard almost fell off the horse. Touching his forehead, I realized he had a high fever. His mutilated ear was red, hot, and swollen. A sound startled me. From the thicket of the forest emerged a woman. I was ready to draw the dagger that was flush against my forearm. I asked her to give us her name. This was her forest, she said, so we should be the ones introducing ourselves. I proclaimed that I was the daughter of the Earl of Shiring, traveling with my brother. I can tell your nobility by your manners. She smiled and revealed in turn that she was the wife of the local verderer. Seeing Richard's ear, she said that he needed help. Luckily, their hut was nearby. She offered us food, shelter, and care.
We followed her to the hut. It was further than she had led us to believe. There, I helped my brother off the horse and let the woman take the horse's reins. The hut was rather barren, with few furnishings. It was almost as cold as outside, and there was no sign of her husband. Richard dropped onto one of the creaky stools. The woman lit a fire, which came alive with a crackle and gave out a warming glow. I raised my voice and repeated more urgently that if we didn't act right now, Richard might die. At my words, the woman seemed to wake up from her absent-mindedness. She nodded towards the fire. There was a sound outside, but she distracted my attention by turning to Richard. She started to explain that to close a wound, one must gently press a hot piece of metal against the flesh. This will stop demons and bad smells from entering the body. The woman's eyes kept darting to the door, so I turned my head to see what it was she was looking for. The moment after I'd turned my head, my own knife was pointing at my face. She'd noticed the dagger in my sleeve and had yanked it out before I knew what was happening. She apologized. It's a tough world, and it's eat or be eaten. There was another noise outside. He's here, she said. I swiftly grabbed a splintered board from the ground and pointed it at her in defense. Suddenly, I was grabbed from behind, and the next moment I landed hard on the floor. He examined us and our weapons and broke into laughter. He stepped closer to reach for Richard's sword, but his wife interrupted. We can't sell that. Everyone would know who that sword belonged to. The man grunted in agreement and turned to leave. Before she followed him, she dropped my dagger. Burn out your brother's wound with this, she said, and disappeared. We heard the whinnying of William's horse and the stomping of hooves from outside. We stood frozen until Richard told me to go and have a look. As I did, the outlaws were long on their way, and our mount with them. The hut probably hadn't belonged to them in the first place, but at least it meant a roof over our heads for the night. The fire was still burning. We had no other choice but to trust the word of the outlaw. The heated dagger trembled in my hands. Do it, Ali, I can take it. Richard tried to sound brave. A horrible hissing sound and the smell of burnt flesh filled the hut when the blade touched his ear, but it seemed to work. For a few hours, I guarded the door while Richard slept, but soon I fell asleep too. We walked for two more days with only brief rests in between, but we finally arrived at the city gates of Winchester. Richard was weak, but at least we were still together, and we were sure that together we would find a way to escape this nightmare.